Hey y'all, it's Pam with 44 Marketplace. It's 8 o'clock or 8.03 on Monday night and I am lucky enough to get to be here with you. So tonight, I guess you notice, there's not a huge piece of furniture sitting here because I've had lots of questions the last few days about creating realistic wood grain. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. So I want to I want to let you know that if you haven't seen me before, I am Pam with 44 Marketplace. I'm the owner and creator here in Eatonton, Georgia, a little town in the middle of nowhere, really. So um, if you have a board like this and you've sanded it back, it's pretty easy to get a wood grain look because this board actually has a wood grain. So we're going to talk about how to do that. Um, using some Dixie Bell products, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. But what happens if your piece looks different? What happened if your piece really isn't wood? I mean, what do you do about that? So I'm gonna show you. Um, if you follow me, you know I do a lot of work that doesn't really have to do with furniture. Um, I do a lot of cabinets, I do beams in the ceiling and things like that. So today what we're going to talk about is sometimes you need to create a wood grain where there really isn't uh, wood. I mean, it's already been painted or something like that. So sometimes you even have something like this. How about that? What if it's this slippery? You know, see how slick that is? All right. So sometimes you're trying to create wood grain on something that's been painted or something that's a laminate. And I mean, look at that. How do you create a wood grain on that? So that's what we're gonna talk about tonight because whether it's like this, whether it's like this, whether it's like the first piece that I showed you, it's really a simple process. A lot of people feel intimidated about it and I'm gonna to explain to you the difference on if you're doing it on a piece of furniture down where you can see it or if you're doing it up in the ceiling. You need to think about the differences. So that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. How to create the wood grain almost anywhere. All right, so this is my board and you can see it is not even pretending to be wood, okay? This is basically glorified cardboard. And um, a lot of times you will get a piece of furniture and maybe it has a veneer on the top or something like that. And if it has a veneer, you know, you have to peel that off sometimes and there's junk wood underneath. And sometimes people will put MDF, medium density fiberboard on the top, which is just barely one step above this. So if you have something like that, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. All right, this side of the board, I have already base coated. But before I base coated it, I wanted to make sure that it was ready for what I have planned for it. So I take out my rad pads. Those of you who follow Dixie Bell know they sell rad pads. And I take out the gray one, which is the medium one, and I get every one of the imperfections that I can and then I go up through them and the last one I use is this super fine rad pad and get it nice and smooth. All right once I've done that that's where this board is. I've already done all of my little sanding and I've already base coated it with Dixie Bell's French linen. Okay Dixie Bell's French linen is what I call a grage. It makes a great great uh, base for this. So you can see we've already got this on here and we've got it all set to do. We're gonna scoot all of our little stuff over. And the colors that we're gonna be using tonight are Gravel Road, which is a Dixie Bell paint. We're gonna be using a Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain, and we're gonna be using um, Sawmill Gravy is what I chose to use tonight. So we've got this base coated, and you can see it's just basic. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to layer our Gravel Road and our tobacco road, both of them have road in it. <laughs> We're going to do it. All right. Hey, Kristen. So now before I start this, I like to dampen my, my piece a little bit and I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna go back and forth and spread my water out because I don't want this to be painted. I want this to just be um, almost like a heavy glaze. And if you're working this on a piece of furniture, it's a pretty easy thing to do because you're down where you can do it. If you're doing this overhead, you might be better off just to, to wet your brush. All right, so now you can see, this is just a very fine kind of mist over this, okay? 
And what you're doing is you're taking your paint and you're spreading it out. You just want it to have a little bit of this over the top of it because this is your base for your wood. This is your streaking, your striations of your wood. Look at that. I got a bristle. Sorry, that's another thing about using chip brushes, and some of mine have seen better days. And I work it a little bit at a time. This is our Voodoo Gel Stain in Tobacco Road, and we're going to go back and forth over this just a little because I want it to have that realistic feel, okay? And like I say, if you're working this overhead, it's a lot different, I can tell you. It's great when you can actually sit above it and think, oh, a little bit more water here. Um, out here where I live, we have a lot of rustic type houses and they love to sometimes decide not to paint the beams and then other times they want the painted beams. So if you have to go back in and recreate this in beams about 18 feet up, it's a little bit different. And that's what I'm going to explain to you tonight. When you're recreating this, especially up high, you want to make sure that it's very exaggerated. The lower and closer it is to you, the less exaggerated it has to be. Then you can go with very fine little details. But if you're doing something even just eight feet up, it really needs a little bit more of a wood grain. It needs a broader wood grain. It, don't you love my shirt? Thank you very much. It needs a broader wood grain. It needs a little bit more going on because you're looking at it from the floor, okay? Thank you, sprinkled and glittered, I appreciate that. So now you can see all I'm doing is just working it back and forth. You can use different brushes, you can use the same brush, whatever you choose to do. Always keep you a baby wipe or a paper towel if it gets too heavy. You'll notice I got real heavy right in there. What I do is I just wipe my brush off a little and Go back over it, and that removes some of what I've got going on. Now, you don't want it really all the same tone because you know, as well as I do, wood doesn't really occur like that. All right, now, if you get too much, you can wipe it back some, and it's still going to give you your striations, okay? Because the whole point of this is it for it to have a very organic look. Now, if you are wiping it back, make sure you're wiping it in the same direction that you brushed it because what we want to do is we're trying to create a wood grain and wood grains do not run willy-nilly, okay? All right. Now, the thing about wiping it back, hang on, y'all. Let me grab this. All right. We don't want, oops, we don't want it to be dry. We don't want it to be wet. We want it to dry. And like I say, when you're working on a piece of furniture, it's pretty easy to do. It's one of those things. It's really an easy thing to create. All right. Now, you can see this is where we are. So far, all we've done to this board is we have started it with Dixie Bell's French linen paint. Then we have layered over it Dixie Bell's Voodoo Gel Stain in Tobacco Road, which is a brown, and we used Dixie Bell's Gravel Road, which is also a paint. So we've layered the two of them, and we're going to let that sit just a quick minute so we don't have to pull the blow dryer out yet. And while that's sitting, we're going to pull this one over here so that you can see where we're going with it. All right, so if you do sand your piece back all the way, to a wood grain, uh, a lot of times your wood doesn't, it doesn't feel real smooth. And I don't know if you can see the difference from where you are, but this is not sanded and this one is sanded. This one is very, very, very smooth. And this one is it. And the difference is this one doesn't take the stain as evenly as this one does. So that's the other thing. If you opt to sand your piece back, Make sure, and the last thing before you start applying your stain, use your super fine rad pad and smooth that grain out, and it really makes it so that it takes it well. And it doesn't take much. Like this board um, was left over from something. I really can't tell you. Hey, Lori. Hey, Kat. How are you? 
Hello, Chris. Thank you. All right, so what you do is you just really have to sand over it just a little bit. It doesn't take much, but when you rub over it, it should be very, very smooth. Now, if you have a mechanical sander, you can do that. But if you have rad pads, they are great just to hand sand over it, and it makes a huge difference. But you can see, if you've got a grain to enhance, it really makes a difference. I mean, it really is truly a difference if you have a grain to enhance. But if you are applying Voodoo Gel Stain, where's my little brush? All right, if you're applying Voodoo Gel Stain, we have brown and we also have, which is, the brown is Tobacco Road, and we also have Up in Smoke. A lot of times, if you're getting ready to apply it to something, dampen your brush a little, get you some stain. Now, you can rub it on. This is just the way I apply it. So I like to work it in just like this, and then I'm going to wipe back the excess. But you can layer this to create a look similar to what we just did with that board over there with paint and stain by using two stains. So I want you to see the difference because sometimes you can sand back and get to this point, but other times, not going to happen, y'all. Not going to happen. But this one only involves embracing the, this method only invol involves embracing the wood grain that you already have. All right. So see, just like that, we're going to rub back over it. I want you to see, even though I'm a furniture painter, y'all, I love me some wood grain. You can see, look at that wood grain. Isn't that gorgeous? So you can see that there, we've sanded over it. We put it on there. But now what we're going to do is we're going to dampen. Damp, damp. We're going to dampen our brush and we're going to brush our up in smoke, which is our gray stain, right over the top of that. You're just going to layer it on there. And don't get nervous about it. It's water based. Both of these are water based. These voodoo gel stains are water based. So they layer beautifully, y'all. I mean, just beautifully. And see, you can wipe it back a little at a time or you can let it sit on there. It makes a huge difference in the way it looks. Now, you can take Dixie Belle paints and do the same thing with a little bit more water, and they will be a great way to faux stain. All right. All right, there we go. So you can see we just put the gray right over the brown. Now we're going to take our cloth. We're going to go back and forth over it. Now you wipe back as much or as little as you want. A little secret, if you're wiping back and it doesn't wipe back as much as you want, Grab a baby wipe. Baby wipes, because they have the extra moisture in them, they will wipe that right back. Now, I'm going to spin this board around and I'm going to show you something else. Remember that gravel road paint we were just using? We're going to pull our brush. We're going to dampen this board a little. And we're going to pull our paint out. Now, this is Dixie Bell's gravel road paint. This is not a stain, but sometimes you need a stain and you don't have any on hand. And you know, with COVID being what it is, you may be in one of those areas that things are shut down. If you've got some Dixie Bell paint, it doesn't matter what color. Watch this. We're gonna just put this on here. There we go. So I want to know, a lot of y'all are getting snow. I got to tell you, I'm glad it was just windy and cold here today. I, I'm glad it w there was no snow involved. I know a lot of people that I talked to today, Oklahoma, I talked to some people in Oklahoma, and they were getting the most snow they've had in a while. And I know Pennsylvania and New Jersey were supposed to be getting snow. Y'all can keep that up there. I got to be honest with you. All right, so now look at that. See how great that is? Isn't that amazing? We just stained this board with gravel road paint, and it looks beautiful, doesn't it? So I don't think a lot of people up to two feet Wednesday into Thursday have mercy, girl. I don't know how y'all can live like that. 
So there it is. You can see it's a great way to do it. We actually used voodoo gel stain on this end. And we used paint to stain this end. So you can see it really makes a difference. Um, you can do so many different things with the Dixie Bell products. But now we're going to go back to what we're working on. All right. So this has had a chance to dry. And when you feel, put your hand on it, if it still feels cool, then it's not completely dry. If it feels room temperature, then you know that it's completely dry. So you can see we've got it layered nicely. So we have created our base for our wood grain. We started with Dixie Bell's uh, French linen, but now you can use any of their neutrals. Sandbar is a great way to start. Dried sage is a good starter. I prefer French linen because it's kind of a grayish, so it goes with browns or grays. So you can see this is where we are. Now what we're going to do is the fun part. This is what everybody loves. This is the money shot, as they call it. So now that you've got this on here, we're going to take ours and we're going to pull out our graining tool. Okay. Uh, I, like I say, I work a lot with um, ceilings and beams. Y'all hang on a second. I think I knocked my little light over. There we go. Sorry about that. All right. So... All right, um, <laughs> it doesn't want to sit up. Um, we have several different graining tools. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. I think mine's still got Grinch fuzz on it. But these are great. These are combs. This is a graining tool. This is probably my favorite one. And then you have this one that has a handle. And this one actually goes on the same handle. So it depends on what size grain you're looking for. This is probably the one that I use the most because most beams, this works great, but every once in a while I'll pull this one out. All right, so we're going to pull this up. Hang on, we're going to try to sit this back up because I can't stand that light stand, sitting up. I don't know why this cannot sit up today for some reason. All right, we'll see. Okay, so we've got it ready. What you're going to do is you need to layer what it is that you want to grain. What colors do you want your grain to be? If you've got this as your base, then it needs to be either darker or lighter than this. It doesn't need to stay in this tone. So what we're going to do is we are going to use gravel rose, which is a little bit darker than, it's actually one of the colors that we use, but it's a little bit darker than what we used. All right. So let's grab our gravel road. And I still like to have a damp brush. I don't know if y'all use a damp brush for nearly everything, and I am saying damp. Um, 10 inches of snow? Oh my gosh! That's crazy to me. They would shut down our whole state for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer it on, okay? And it seems like I'm going back over what I just did and in a way, I am, but it's one of those things that when you see it, you'll know it. It's such a great way to create a good look. Now, you don't have to just choose one color. That's the greatness of it. You can layer lots of different colors. You just want to make sure that your main color is either darker or lighter. Because if it's the same tone and the main body of it isn't darker or lighter, then you'll have a, an issue. So I'm going to show you, we're going to layer this in here. And like I say, remember this is glorified cardboard. This really is not what you would even call wood. This isn't even similar to wood, y'all. Hey, Barry. There's another one that's coming to a three-day boot camp. If you come to one of my three-day boot camps here in Georgia, you'll see we, like to, we all like to do the wood graining because it's a great way to create a look that gives the illusion that you have a real wood top. Okay, so now we've got that on there, but if you know me, one color really isn't enough for me, so I'm going to put a little bit of my brown back in here because I just need it. <laughs> and I know people want to say, well, how much of this and how much of that? Y'all, if you follow me, you know I'm not going to measure this stuff. If you measure it, then it's not organic, right? No, it's not. 
Okay, so we're going to go back and forth and we're just layering this in here. But our main color that we put in here is our... Alright, so now you can see. Look at that. It looks kind of like a hot mess, doesn't it? Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our graining tool. It depends on which one you want to use. You can use this one. You can see they're all very similar in the way that they grain. So this one has little, a little knob that you hold on to and you rock it as you move it, okay? So you have control over what you're graining. If you want big knots, then there you go. So I'm going to hold this up a little. Hopefully I can hold it up. There we go. Let's grab this piece. There we go. All right, so now you can see, I hope you can see, so you can see I've already got one. I'm going to wipe this back a little because if you don't keep your graining tool clean, now the one beside it, I'm going to just let it be just the grain and then we're going to rock it again, okay? And it depends on where you start and where you end as to what kind of grain it is, okay? So we're going to wipe that back. Now, hold it up. And is that the grain that you were looking for? Sometimes when you do it the first time, you look at it and you're like, oh, well, not really. Okay, if not really is your answer, then do this. Add a little bit of water, squirt, 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 and brush back over it. And I know this makes a lot of people nervous, but it's just paint, y'all. It's just paint. Nah, that's not the grain I was going for. I wanted something different. So I'm just going to swirl back over that. Look at that. And just like that, that grain is gone. So it's super easy to do. And we're going to go at it again. So what you want to do is blot your graining tool and go at it again. And I can tell you, I don't like that. I'm used to standing up to do this. So, we're going to do it again. I'm used to either standing up or laying on my back to do this. If I'm doing it above my ha head, I have to lay on my back to do this. And I got to tell y'all, when you're 18 feet up, you don't want to do it any more than you have to unless you have better upper body strength than I do. Got to be honest with y'all. All right, so let's do this. Okay, now we're going to add this second one. All right. So now you can see, this is what we have. We have our beautiful wood grain, and what we're going to do is we're going to dry this up a little because it still doesn't really look like wood yet. Be patient. I want y'all to see exactly what it looks like because it still looks kind of flat and we've got to make it look like wood. there. 
Got to get that dry so we can do what else needs to be done. Thank you, Tracy. Hey, Billy. Sorry, y'all. I see everybody dropping off, but this is part of it if you're going to uh, do it right. All right, so now you can see this is what we have. And I know a lot of people look at this and they think this is a good wood grain, but this is not a good wood grain to me. It still looks a little flat. Um, and now that's what I want to remind you. If you're working on beams, which is what I work on a lot, um, you want it to be very exaggerated. You need big knot holes. You need big grain and everything. If you're working on a smaller piece of furniture, you would probably want to do something more like this. If you're working on something larger, you may want to do something like this and have wider planks. But a lot of times, I'm working on beams in the ceiling, so this is what I do. But to me, this is still kind of flat. And this kind of gives me a look, but not the look. And so that's when I pull out my sawmill gravy. Because if you've ever worked with wood before, which I do every day, you know that wood has light places in it. So I have to go back over my pieces with this, and I have created a wood grain. So I have actually created texture on this piece that is going to catch my edges of this. Because I have created the texture to make this be a wood grain. All right, now you've got to rub it in. Now you have to have a cloth when you do this part. You can't take a paper towel. It doesn't do the same thing. And now you have to manipulate this that you just put on. You want to make it part of what you just put on. That's why I tell you it has to be dry. It cannot be wet. It has to be dry for this part because you've got to make sure that this will smooth in All right, I still want a little bit more over here. Little touch more. And this is one of those things that you do to taste, so to speak. Every person wants a little more or a little less or whatever. And like I say, this is one of those things that I do a lot of. So um, I think I did this the first time a few years ago, at least two, if not maybe a little more. And uh, it's one of those things that I really like. Now, if by some chance you get too much light in there, take your brush and just kind of feather over it. But now when I say feather over it, we're talking butterfly kisses, y'all. I mean butterfly kisses. Go back over it. I'm happy with mine, so I'm not going to feather over it. All right, so now you can see we have a wood grain that if you saw it on the top of a piece, you would be hard-pressed to tell because this has brown, it has gray, it has a grayish, it has a cream color, it has striations in it, it has a lot of movement to it, and it is very fluid. And you can see even where inside the grain, you can see the striations of color that we laid down here. I left this open, um, and it really makes a difference. It does not reactivate the other colors. Um, once the other paints, so long as you don't go real crazy with the amount of water that you put on there, it really doesn't act, reactivate the paint underneath. If you're worried, you can always clear coat this, but now typically when I work it, I never clear coat between coats. Um, I just lay down my French linen, and then I go back over with whatever colors, and that's what I want to tell you. You don't have to use any set color scheme. Um, I have customers that this is a color scheme that works a lot, but you can choose grays, you can choose browns, you can choose whatever you want. I'll usually start with a base of dried sage, French linen, um, sandbar, something like that. If you put too light a base, it really doesn't end up looking natural. So if you go as light as a sawmill gravy or a French linen, a sawmill gravy or a drop cloth, it's really too light in most cases, but
but it's very easy to do if you start with a middle of the road kind of base. Um, and then that's when I layered this on like we did. We did our gravel road and our tobacco road and we allowed that to dry. So you allow each layer to dry before going to the next layer. So we started with French linen, allowed it to dry. Then we did gravel road and tobacco road and allowed that to dry. But now that layer had more water in it than any of the rest of them. And then we did heavy tobacco, I mean heavy gravel road and then a little bit of tobacco road layered in there. And then you saw that we grained it with our graining tool and you can see how messy it is now. And then after that dried, that's when we go back over with our sawmill gravy and our dilapidated chip brush. And you just want just, just, I mean, just minor, minor amount of that on there. Now you can layer in other colors. When I've done this before, I've layered in burlap over this. I've layered in uh, pretty much any color you can imagine. I, I've layered in dried sage. Uh, whatever color scheme you're going for, you can layer in as many over the top because you've created texture. If you run your fingers across this, you can feel the texture that I created with the graining tool because when I do it, I make sure that my paint is thick enough so that I create actual texture so that when I start adding these details with the striations, it's going to catch on here. And you can see it catches on those ripples, it catches on these, so that it allows me to highlight the details that I created. And it makes such a huge difference. Now, I would let this dry overnight because I have so many layers before I top coated it. Whether you're working beams or whether you're working a piece of furniture or like she said, a front door, um, it, you can do whatever it is, but make sure that it's dry through and through. Like right now, I can tell you that this piece probably needs to be dried a little bit more. But, you know, when you're working in the time frame that I have on Monday night, I wanted you to see it's super easy to do. And a lot of people have tables that are veneer and they don't want to have to sand them down for fear of sanding through the veneer or in some cases you sand through the veneer by accident because you think it's solid. This is a great way to fix that. Just go in and like I say your wood grain can be as narrow or as wide as you choose for it to be and it's a very easy technique to do and you saw we all used all Dixie Bell products. Dixie Bell even sells the graining tools. So if your local retailer is out there, go ahead and tell them you want to try this and just make sure and layer your colors, allow each layer to dry, and it makes a huge difference in the way your project comes out. So I hope you can see what we are doing. And like I say, remember what this was. This is basically cardboard. You can see it is just junk board that I picked up out of the studio <laughs> and it is just super easy to do. Y'all saw, and I could have done the whole top of a piece of furniture, but remember now, what I didn't say a while ago, and I meant to, and I apologize, if you're starting out with something like this, a lot of times you'll have a piece that has Formica on the top. See how shiny that is? You'll wanna start out with Dixie Belle's Slick Stick and do a coat, allow it to dry, do a second coat, and then after that dries overnight, then you start the process that we did tonight. Because if your piece is like this, and you don't at least scuff sand it or something, it is not going to take your finish as well as it will if you prep it properly. So you have the choice. If it's shiny, shiny like this, you can scuff sand it with your rad pads. I would do it with my gray one. But you can also use Dixie Belle Slick Stick, pull out that Slick Stick, put on a coat of it, let it dry, put on a second coat, let it dry overnight. If you're like me and you're impatient, that's fine. Just let it dry overnight. And then go ahead and start. Now remember where we started. We started with French linen as our base coat. We allowed that to dry. We went back over gravel road and tobacco road voodoo gel stain. We layered those in there and that's what you see right here. And then after those were dry, we put heavy, heavy, of our gravel road paint and then we added just a tiny bit of our tobacco road and we used our graining tool to create our wood grain and now you see where we are. The final step was adding our sawmill gravy to give our striations. 
So I hope y'all enjoyed that. I hope if you're working on a piece of furniture that needs this process, uh, that you understand how to do it. If you have any questions, I'm Pam with 44 Marketplace and I am always available for questions or whatever and I would appreciate it if you would follow me at 44 Marketplace. I will see you next Monday night at 8 p.m. and I wish you all a great week. Thanks for watching. Bye y'all.